Oh, it's so cold. That's okay though. Today, we're gonna be going over uh, Fuel Tech's universal four-cylinder wiring harness and why I chose to use this instead of the flying lead harness and then putting it into the car and then running, you know, running the lines and stuff. So stay tuned for a riveting episode of Logan doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, also, if you're wondering, I don't have one of those Instagram model lights on my face. It's just the sun off the snow really bringing out my natural glow. <laughs> Trademark Logan, Logan from Clapped Out LLC. <laughs> All right, firstly, don't judge a couple things about our kitchen. Number one, there's dirty dishes in the dish, the dish area, also known as a freaking sink. God, what's wrong with my brain? Number two, you'll notice this. It's called a scat mat, which you think it is dirty. If you, no, never mind, I'm not even gonna get into that. But uh, what this thing is, is when my piece of very lovely cats jump up on the counter uh, they fight, right? So this is Maud. Hey, Maud. What's up, dude? She's she's her own person. And then where's Walt? Walter! This is Walt. Walter hates Maud. So he jumps up and he pisses all over the counter because Maud hangs out above the countertop away from Walt. So now we got a scat mat. So when he jumps up there, a little 9-volt battery shocks the shit out of him and he jumps down. Doesn't like shock him like crazy. I'll, I'll touch my, I'll touch it just so you know that it's not bad. Not bad. Ah, okay, it's a little, it's just like, it's shy, it's just like surprising. Enough with that though. Here's what I'm gonna show you. This is, uh, I tell you what, I should probably prepare better for these demonstrations. Okay, so here's the two options for harnesses when you're trying to wire something up from fuel tech in terms of four cylinder. So you have your uh, terminated harness, universal four-cylinder, and your unterminated harness. There is a vast amount of difference between the two, including a bunch of cat hair on my... And I don't know what that is. What is that? Peanut butter? I hope. Charlie, did you poop on me? A little more floor space to show you. Obviously, there's huge differences. One's finished, one's not. So your unterminated harness, it's, I think, 100 bucks. And it comes with the, like I said before, 400 feet of wire. You terminate all this stuff yourself. The nice thing about the unterminated harness is you custom tailor it to your application. If you're building something from scratch and you have the time and the uh, skill set, I don't have either of those. So it comes with shielded wiring too for cam and crank. It comes with all your leads. The back of the main connector, because this is the only thing that plugs into the fuel tech, it's populated with all those wires that are color coded to your wiring harness diagram. So that's great. But if you watched the last Civic episode, you know that, well, I abandoned that in five seconds because I said, no, thank you. I don't want to do all that work. I want to do minimal work because I'm lazy. So I bought the universal four-cylinder harness, which comes with a lot more than that. As a result, it's obviously more expensive than this. I'm also turning into a really big hand talker. I hope you enjoy what I'm doing over here. Now, the other thing that comes with this harness, obviously like the other harness, it's populated all the way in the back. But the other thing it comes with is this extension piece that's already wired into the main harness. This is your WB, your Wideband O2 Nano harness. This sub harness is $49. That harness is $99. So all in, you have $150 versus this harness being $599. Um, also, I am a dealer for Fuel Tech now at Dynasty. So if you need anything Fuel Tech related, you can always holler at us. Happy to support the product line and get you what you need. But that was a really, <laughs> that's like a shameless advertising plug. I'm very sorry. However, you have your main connector plugs into your ECU, follow it all the way down to a rubber grommet at your firewall, and then it breaks out into your connectors. I'll get into these in a second. First and first mostly though, you have your relays. It comes already equipped with three main relays. These relays are also pre-labeled. You have your injector relay, your coil relay, and your main relay. So main relay, all the power, your injectors and your coils have their own relay. These also light up so you know that they're powered. You can mount them remotely, get them out of the way, but easy access if you need to change a fuse. The fuse is integrated in the top of the relay right there. So follow that all the way down. You have another connector down here. This connector is for peak and hold injectors. If you need to break those out, you have a couple other unterminated wires that are labeled. First one is switch 12 volt. And the second one should be, I think, tack input or clutch switch. Yeah, two steps. So this would be like your clutch switch. 
um, WB Nano, and then down here, you also have a pigtail with extra outputs and inputs available as well as 12 volt, 12 volt power tap, ground tap, things like that. So you have basically a complete harness that is plug and play-ish. It's not plug and play because there's stuff you still have to wire. So when I say it's plug and play-ish, I mean that because you have cam VR and cam hall effect. These are shielded wires that are terminated at the ECU connector, like I said, but no two cam sensors, no, no two crank sensors are gonna be the same. Same like injectors. These are the ends of the injectors, your injector plugs. I think this is EV1 style. So you can change it out to whatever injector clip you have, but everything's broken out. It's already pre-wired for smart coils if you use smart coils. Um, it has FT, FT550 expansion if you wanna do FT550. It's a universal just A harness, so you can use it on 450 or 550. But if you look, all the connectors are labeled with really nice heat trunk labels. It's solid, it's a solid sheathing. It's not split loom, so that's a nice touch. Everything's heat trunk glued. And obviously, like I said, labeled with clear shrink over the top, which I do like and appreciate a ton. The cost of that harness versus the cost of that harness obviously is a big difference. But again, how much time you save with starting with one like this is incredible. So that was why I chose to purchase that instead of starting from scratch. Last time I worked on the car, a couple things. Number one, there wasn't a bunch of trash in the garage, but the trash hasn't come for like six weeks because of the snow. So there's a bunch of trash, sorry. There's a whole bunch of trash. But last time I was working on the car, I did the uh, master cylinder hydraulic conversion for the clutch kit, which was so much fun. I had such a good time. This time, all I'm gonna be doing is running the harness into the engine bay, uh, plumbing it through the firewall with the grommet and looping and flooping and slooping the back of the plug to the back of my cluster. Now, if you've seen, I don't think I ever installed it. I don't even remember when I, I was so mad I had to leave the car alone for two weeks. Um, I don't know if you've seen this in the last episode, but I already got the FT mounted and my wideband looks like it's sagging and sad, but I'll fix that up. But I need to get it to the back of the cluster, plug it in. That little nipple right there is actually the map sensor, so I don't have to run an external map, but nice fit and finish, easy install, one plug and you're done. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Also, a little sub review on the Mr. Heater 35,000 pile of trash, garbage, waste of $89 that literally won't keep the garage warm for longer than three and a half seconds. Even though my garage's doors are like not insulated, who cares? This thing should do a lot better than it does. I really miss my hot chode, but I cannot find a freaking propane cable hoser deal for that one anymore. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you so much, you piece of trash. Nobody loves you, Mr. Heater. If you were a lady, you'd be Miss Heater because nobody would ever marry you, you piece of shit. Hey, can propane freeze? Is this helping? I feel like my propane's frozen. This is so bad. And also, I think maybe my review of the Mr. Heater was premature because I think that that tank may just not be a good tank because the other, the other tank is making a, a lot more heat. But I stand by my statement, Miss Heater. That, that's sexist. I don't mean like women are less than men. I mean like you'd be single and you wouldn't have the surname of Mrs. Which is also a little misogynistic that the woman has to change her surname. Or not surname, but like her, I guess her surname. Yeah, that's pretty sexist. Man, we gotta change America. My apologies if you can't hear over the heater, but I gotta get rolling on this thing. I can't let it heat up anymore in here. So. First thing I have to do is decide which way to route the harness. If I wanna go in the back door or in the front door. So I have to worm this and all the relays and everything through the firewall, or I have to individually shove all these little guys through the firewall. So looking at my options, I see a hole down yonder, which I think is gonna be, I think that's gonna be the move right there. Let's try that one out. All right. So, easy enough, that's the pass-through, right there. And this is my Loom De La wiring. All right, sorry. So I got my coils through, I got my main connector through. Right now, I'm just gonna lay the stuff out so I can come back to it and then organize it how I want and run it how I want without things getting all jacked around. Okay, now that my Mr. Heater's off, I can talk a little more calmly about this. 
And I can also show you the layout of this harness a little bit better now that it's run through the firewall. So you can see down there, the rubber grommet, If you, it's actually hard to see, but the rubber grommet is in the pass-through hole. I think that used to be, now that had to be AC. I don't know what that used to be, whatever. But the harness is laid out kind of categorically for a reason so I can run you through everything it comes with really quickly. So you have your coils. So you have four coils, obviously, for four-cylinder harness. Lay by the coils. You have your injectors, four injectors. They're labeled, obviously, one through four. Lay those by your fuel rail. Now, over here, things get a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. You have your crank and your cam sensors, which you have to wire yourself, like I said. And then you have all of your power and grounds as well. Pull those out. You'll see they have a decent amount of length on them. Everything with a ring terminal. You'll see two, and then three. You have three total power and grounds. You'll see battery negative, and then red goes directly to battery positive. You'll also see the smaller one says power ground. You can run this to chassis or directly to battery. I elect to run it directly to battery. And then all of your generic sensors or your, your more common sensors rather. So you have fuel pressure. You'll note that this is pinned just for your standard 150 PSI style sensor. You have your wideband O2 sensor. So this is actually what plugs into your wideband. And the O2 sensor is actually like a Volkswagen or an Audi O2 sensor you can get at any auto parts store, which is nice. So you don't have to order one directly from Fuel Tech if you're in a pinch. You got another 150 PSI sensor plug for oil pressure. You have TPS sensor. This is that old weather pack style, so you can switch that out as well. And dangling down here, you got your H2O temp. You'll see it's just a resistor-based two-pin sensor deal. And then, let me see what I missed here. Am I missing anything? I think that's it. That's all the generic stuff. Uh, you don't see a map sensor plug on this harness because the map sensor is internal on the fuel tech. Now, Inside the vehicle, you'll see exactly what I showed you earlier. Just a little bit broken down. Um, so your main plug to the back of your ECU, easy, simple. This plugs into the back of your wideband display or your WBO2 Nano. So if you look at my cluster again, just to reaffirm, this plugs into the back of this. So if I flip this around, you'll see this literally just plugs straight into the back of that. And when that plugs in, you key the car on, this will actually read your air-fuel ratio, which is nice and convenient. You have a couple other things in here. You have your 550 expansion. I have a 450, so I will not be using these. And again, you have your red wires, 12-volt switched, and then you got a white wire that's two-step or neutral safety switch, whatever you want to use it for. you got a peak-and-hold injector breakout. If you're running standard, like I'm running fuel injector clinic, so I don't need this. Um, injector dynamics, so on and so forth, you don't need that. Also, you got your relays. You got three of them, three Amigos. Mount them somewhere you can get to easily so you're not searching and diving and ducking and breaking parts of your dash off like I already have. That's the ticket on these. So chassis side, internal, the only thing you really have to hook up internally are these two wires. That's it. 12 volt switched, and if you want a two-step wire or a neutral safety switch, that switch. Could not be easier on the inboard side of the car. It is so simple and so straightforward. Okay, so put your reading glasses on. This is your booklet that'll come with your harness. Uh, on page 11 and 10, I'm sorry, 10 and 11, you'll see it's for 450 and 550. All you have with the 450 universal harness, if that's what you have, is the A connector. You do not have a B connector. You don't need it, um, obviously, because it doesn't have it. However, if you look at this, uh, this page, page 10 on this notebook, you'll see auxiliary outputs listed. And when you see those, you'll see them labeled as C, D, E, F, and then down here, you'll see more of them, if I can find it, A and B. Make sense? Cool. You'll also see K. See that? Everybody see that? Good. So anywhere you see a letter, right? Not a number, but a letter. This is what that refers to. So what those letters translate to, for easy reference, on, this out, this, on your harness, you'll have this output breakout, right? So it's just a, a male plug. It comes with female plug and pins and stuff. Well, you wire your own individual outputs as needed here. And on the actual connector, using a screwdriver to point, you're going to see the letters that correspond to that harness you just looked at, or that harness diagram, rather. So you have F, G, H, I, and J. I'm sorry, F, G, H, J, and K. God, I'm new. But either way, I was just trying to go with the alpha. E, F, G, H, I, J. Do I not know the alphabet? A, B, C, 7... Please hold while Logan relearns his alphabet. All right, I'll try it again, try it again. F, G, H, 
J and K. On the back side, you have on the far left, E, then D, then C, then B, then A, which makes more sense to me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Where's I? How dare they make me look like a buffoon? To be fair, I make my, did I close that? Got it with my foot. I make myself look like more of a buffoon than anything. Now to recap on this, I got a pointing device now so I can talk about it a little easier. Blue number three, we just talked about this. C, D, E, and F. You can correlate that to what it can do. So you can see exactly, you know, how they, I mean, they even advise fuel pump and relays for pin F, B, six, so on and so forth. Come all the way down here, you see A and B. That's extra auxiliary outputs as well. Come down even further, you got an extra input, so wastegate pressure, or whatever you want to use it for. I honestly would like to use this last input as a quench or keister sensor, where you just, well, we'll talk about it later. It's a strain gauge for your butthole, but I'm not done refining the product, so I don't want to talk about it too much. Come on. You gotta do like the exit interview stuff. Do you know the drill? Stop yawning. You make my video sound boring as hell, dude. So, at the end of the day, really what it com comes down to is you have to think about how much time you're going to have to work on your car. And after that, you got to think about how talented you are at wiring. I'm not that talented at wiring, so if I just wanted something I could clip the connectors off. And then after the clip the connectors off, I could just stretch the wires out. <laughs> and then once that was done, I could just kind of fit and finish where I wanted instead of having to make a whole harness. But I do appreciate everybody watching, and I know Charlie does too, but old Charmander needs to go for a little bit of a run ski because she's been cooped up all day. Daddy, you has been cooped up all day. That's how I talk now, because I'm a dog dad now. That's a good puppy. Tell him about the hoodies. I got hoodies for sale on the website. Dad really likes them. Ow, oh, she got my nose. Oh, you bit my nose. Could have permanently disfigured my beautiful nose, Charmander. You're just so damn adorable, I can't even get mad at you.